Hello folks, in this video we'll look at how to use a joystick controller with Pygame. By the end of the video you will have a player rectangle that you can fully control with the joystick. We'll begin with the starter code where I create the game window, define a helper function for displaying text and create a clock to limit the game speed to 60 frames per second. I then create a player rectangle and position it at the x and y coordinates. I also specify a color variable, which will be used later once we get the joystick connected up. Next is the game loop, where I draw the rectangle and have my event handler for closing the game down. The first thing I will do is initialize the joystick module. I'll go up to the top and I'll paste in this code which says pygame.joystick.init. Now we can begin adding and keeping track of joysticks within the game. So to do that, I'm going to come down here and I will create an empty list to store the joysticks. This will just be joysticks is equal to empty square brackets. Now, whenever a joystick gets connected, I'm gonna add it into this list. But how do we know if a joystick has been connected? Well, for that, there is an event within Pygame, which means I need to go into my event handler and I will add an additional event by saying if event.type is equal to pygame.joyDevice added. This event will be triggered every time I connect a joystick. So let's print this event out and see what it says. Now when I run it, I've already got my joystick connected. So straight away, it's triggered an event down here. It gives me a device index and a GUID. What I'm interested in is the device index. That's the value that's assigned to each individual joystick as it gets connected. One thing to keep in mind is that this event gets triggered whether you have the joystick connected before you launch the game or if you connect it during. So right now I've got the joystick connected, I run it, and already it's detected this event. Now I can disconnect the joystick and I can reconnect it again and you'll see that it triggers a second time. The device index is the same because I've got the same number of joysticks connected as before. Now I can use this value here to create a joystick object. I'll assign it to a variable called joy and I'll say it's equal to pygame.joystick.joystick with a capital and what I pass in here is that event.deviceIndex. Once that's done, I can add this into my overall joysticks list by saying joysticks.append joy. Now that I've got this joystick created, we can start having a look at some of the methods that come with the module. First of all, I'm going to paste in some code up here. Now this is my draw text function from before, but the important thing that it's outputting onto the screen is this pygame.joysticks.getCount method. This will return the number of joysticks that are connected. So it says controllers one, if I disconnect it, it drops to zero, reconnect it, goes back to one. There are a few other things that we can call from this module. And I'm gonna paste them all in down here. So what I'm doing is iterating through each joystick within that joysticks list, and then I'm outputting some information on each specific one. The joystick module has a bunch of different methods, but I'm just showing a few of the common ones here. So we've got get power level, which will tell me how much battery charge I've got, get name, which will tell me what kind of controller it is, and then get the number of axis with get underscore num axis. If we run this, you can see a whole bunch of information being displayed now. Uh, the one that I find quite interesting is this controller type. So it detects the type of controller I've got connected, which is a PS4 controller, and it's a six axis PS4 controller. Now this is handy for getting some information back from the joystick, but how do we actually get button inputs? How do we control things on the screen with the joystick? Well, there are two ways to do this. We can either go into the event handler or we can get button inputs directly by checking the state of each individual button. Pygame has assigned a number value to each of the buttons that are on the controller. So you can check for each specific button by passing in the number of it. To start with, I wanna check for the X, circle, square, and triangle buttons. We'll do that by iterating through all the joysticks in our list. So I'll say for joystick in joysticks, and I'll add a comment to say change player color with buttons. The first button that I want to check is the cross. So I'll say if joystick.get underscore button, and in here I just pass in the value that Pygame assigns to the cross, which is zero. And if that's the case, then I change the call variable, which is the color of that rectangle, to royal blue. Now I can do the same for the rest of the buttons. So I'm just gonna paste this code in and it checks for the X, circle, square, and triangle, and it changes the color according to each one. If I run this, I'm gonna have my rectangle on the screen, but as I press the buttons, you can see that it's changing color. So that's working pretty well. So now let's have a look at moving the rectangle around the screen. If we have a look at those button assignments again from the documentation, we can see that 11 through to 14 give us the directional buttons. So that's the buttons that we want to check within here. I'm gonna stay within the same for loop, and I'll add a comment to say player movement with joystick. And just as I did before, I'm gonna to go to that specific joystick and I'll say get underscore button 
and I'll pass in number 14. This will allow me to move to the right, and to do that, I just adjust my X variable. So I'll increase the X variable by five pixels. I can then repeat this for the rest of the directional buttons with pasted code here. So going to the left is going to decrease the X variable by five pixels, and then I've got the same for Y for moving up and down. Once these X and Y variables are updated, if we go and have a look up here, the player's rectangle is updated based on those values. So we will use that to move the rectangle around. If I run this again, and I start pressing the D-pad buttons, you can see the player rectangle moves around. Now we've got directional input with the D-pad, I want to have a look at how to handle the analog stick input. If we look at the documentation again, we can see that each of the analog sticks is broken up into two axes. So the left analog stick has a horizontal axis, which is axis zero, and then a vertical axis, which is axis one. We can use these to see how far to move the player. So we go back into here and we'll say player movement with analog sticks. And I'm going to separate those two axes into their own variables. So we'll say horiz move for horizontal movement is equal to joystick.get underscore axis and it's axis zero. And now I can repeat this for axis one. So I'll change this to vert move and change it to axis one. Now let's just print one of these out to see what it actually looks like. So I'm gonna print the horizontal one out for now. And you can see straight away I'm getting a value here. So if I move to the left, it goes to minus one. And if I move to the right, it goes to almost plus one. But you can see that between those two values, there's a whole host of different values depending on how far across I push the analog stick. And we can use that to adjust how fast this rectangle moves across the screen. I can get rid of this print statement now. And I will say y is increased by vertical movement multiplied by five, and then X is increased by horizontal movement multiplied by five. The reason I multiply by five is so that it's the same as the D-pad movement. And now we run this code again, and you can see I'm able to now move around this rectangle with the analog sticks. So if I push it just slightly, it moves slowly, and if I push it all the way, it moves a lot faster. Now this gives me much smoother control over the rectangle, and I can still use the D-pad if I want to. But there is one small thing to note. If I let go of everything, you can see that the rectangle is actually moving a tiny bit. So why is that happening? Well, if I print this value out again, so let's print out vertical move this time, you can see that it doesn't actually go to zero. So what I need to do is ignore these very small values that are very close to zero. To do that, I will add a threshold. So we'll remove this print statement and above this Y, I'm going to say if the absolute value of my vertical movement is greater than, let's say 0.05. Well, in that case, that means that I am actually holding down the analog sticks. So I'm going to move. And then I do the exact same thing for the horizontal movement. I'll say if absolute value of the horizontal movement is greater than 0.05, then I increase the X value. If I run this again, you'll see that the rectangle is now completely stationary. But as soon as I put in any input, it moves around. And that's how you get input from the joystick within Pygame. I know I haven't covered all of the buttons, but the rest of them work in the same way as either the analog sticks or the digital input buttons that I've looked at already. So you can expand this and add full controller functionality to your games. If you found this useful, then please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.